Well, good evening. Somebody better answer that phone. It might be the Lord. The Lord calling the preacher. <laughs> well, has everybody had a good week so far? A wet one? It has been wet. So the golfers haven't golfed much this week. Don't have time. You're working too much. That's a good thing, right? Everything in moderation. Well, I've had a good week. I'm looking forward to an even better week. And uh, it's going to get gooder and gooder and gooder as the week goes on. Right? Right? All right. Well, um, Let's stand and open with prayer tonight, and uh, if that's okay, and we'll sing a little, fellowship a little, preach a little. You might preach a lot tonight. You stirred up, so we might be here a while. <laughs> We're in trouble tonight. He's already been to my office. So, Brother Eddie Story, will you open us in prayer tonight? refreshing us with. God, it just makes us know that you're soon coming. And Lord, we just uh, pray, Lord, for our leadership. Uh, we pray for just your hand upon him. We pray even right now, Lord, for the service tonight. Uh, give us the words that you will have us to hear. Use the pastor to call in the mighty way. Open up our hearts to receive it. We just thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Well, if you want to use a hymn book, you can. If not, page 250 in the hymn book, Old Little Town of Bethlehem. And uh, I think we know most of this. If not, we'll make it up, all right? Old Little Town of Bethlehem, how still we see the light above thy deep and dreamless, the silent. Stars go by, yet in thy dark streets shine the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Oh, holy child. Send on us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter and be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us. Abide with us, our Lord, Emmanuel. Amen. You'll be seated for just a minute. We'll sing some more in just a second, but we've got some announcements that are really, 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 really important. So hold on. Here we go. Decorating committee. The decorating committee for our Christmas play. They are working very hard from 9 o'clock to 7 o'clock every day. If you can help us in any way, we need your help. We just need able bodies. 
capable bodies. If you can do this, if you can tote, oh, that's right, Paul, that's what we need, right? And then some. And then some. But yeah, we, uh, the Wendy uh, asked for your help. She'll be here uh, even uh, coming up into Saturday from 9 o'clock to 7 o'clock is the time she had told me. The Youth Christmas Party is this Friday night at Stacy Birch's house from 6 to 10 o'clock. You need to let them know that if you've got kids. Plan on taking them to that. And then what I'm looking forward to, Chicken Bog at the Barn Hills. Christmas at the Barn Is that Christmas in Loris or Conway? What's that considered? Conway? Ainer. You live in Ainer? I knew it would turn out funny if I said anything to him, if he heard me. Uh, but uh, that, their drop-in party is this Saturday from 6 to 8. Uh, make sure you, you take time to drop by there. Uh, they're, they're preparing for us, and Jack said he's going to make two pots of chicken bog. And I'm taking one of them home with me. Uh, Monday night, the Sisters of Dorcas and the middle school uh, youth uh, will be going on a, a carol sing. We'll be going to visit several of our shut-ins and different ones. Uh, if you want to be part of that, uh, meet us here at 615. We'll be leaving at 615, so we'll be here a little early. Uh, it's going to be a fun night. We're going to end it up at the Krispy Kreme. God's in that. Everybody said amen. Uh, the, uh, again, our Christmas play is next weekend. Uh, Cameron and I are working on a video. Uh, we're tr going to try to get it finished up, so we're going to put it on Facebook. And so we'll put it on the church's page. We want you to share it with everybody you know. So we want to fill this place up on Saturday night as well as Sunday night. Uh, it's, the play's got a great message. And uh, you know, it's, it's talking about, you know, the dad is probably the main character in, in the play, wouldn't you think, Miss Pam? And... Uh, uh, the dad is Sean Williams, and uh, the kids make the statement, Dad, you never come to any of our events. You don't come to this, you don't come to that. And so they drag him to the Christmas play because they're in the Christmas play. And he gets up and leaves the Christmas play mad. And there it's when it gets good. So uh, be here, bring your friends. Bring some people that don't know the Lord. We, that's who we need. If there's a broken home, we bring them. Get them here. We want to be a witness and, a, and an encouragement to them, especially here at Christmas time. Um, parents' night out, we're making a video for that as well. That's December the 20th from 6 to 9.15. That's Tuesday the 20th. So a lot going on, a lot going on. So uh, all the announcements are there. I'll mention this too, prayer, prayer needs. Uh, I went by the hospital today. Uh, Miss Joyce uh, Mitchell went on home. Uh, Brother Buddy uh, also uh, got sent home today, Buddy Daniels. Uh, but Rachel Evans, one of our, our young girls, uh, she's eight years old. She was admitted today. Uh, she's got pneumonia as well as strep at the same time. And so I went and spoke, sat with her dad for quite a while, and we fellowshiped, had a good time, prayed with them. Uh, so she'll be there for a day or two. She's at Grand Strand Regional in the pediatric, pediatric unit. So be praying for her. She seemed awful happy to be so sick. And uh, I said, is there anything I can do for you? She said, I'm just hungry. They won't let her eat. So she's on clear liquid. So y'all pray for her. That's got to be really devastating to a kid when they're hungry and can't eat. So pray for her. Uh, there's, there's many, many, many other needs on our prayer list. Uh, uh, I, I want to thank God for helping Mickey. Uh, she was in so much pain this time last week. But uh, uh, thank you, uh, thanks to Dr. Linda Berry for, and his staff for being so good to us and helping her. Uh, and thank you, Lord, for touching her. Uh, it's been a good week. Uh, continue to pray for her dad. And, you know, there's, there's many needs of our church. Uh, I got here just in time. I uh, got finished up with some things Monday night after the, the, the party next door to get in on the end of the prayer room. And uh, just to know how God works, I don't even know if you know this, but uh, when they had started praying earlier, uh, Brother Clarity, uh, Brother Steve had prayed for his niece and nephew. And right about the time he prayed, they were in a car wreck. And uh, God, God protected all of them. But... Right, right about the time they had prayed, you know, Lois tried to message him to let him know, hey, I'm going to take care of them. Ain't it neat how when we're in that position and we're in the throne room of grace, how God will speak to us and burden us for somebody else's heart. I want to be found guilty enough that I could be in that place where he'll, he'll speak to me to, to intercede on somebody else's behalf. But, I mean, after that, 
if you could have been here for the last part of that prayer meeting when we were thanking God for what he was doing and what he's going to do, well, well, it was good. War Room, Monday nights, 8.30. Be here if you can. Uh, other than that, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, Brother Charles is ready. Do we have any visitors tonight, first-time attenders? Uh, I, I should have already done that. Anybody, anybody, anybody? Anybody willing to admit it? Uh, <laughs> well, we appreciate everybody being here tonight. Let's, let's stand and sing. Uh, I've got another Christmas hymn. It came upon a midnight clear. It came upon a midnight clear That glorious song of old From angels bending near the earth To touch their harps of gold earth good will to men from heaven's all gracious key the world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing if you would turn around and shake hands with those around you at the Cindy place Welcome home to Grand Strand here on Wednesday night.
shall come the time foretold when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendors flee and the back the song which now the angels sing. Brother Charles, will you lead us in prayer?
burdens alone. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. Oh, how the world to evil allures me. And oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. I must tell Jesus and He will help me make up my troubles quickly and so Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must. Tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus can God's given us so many privileges, and yet He foreordained that we might live in the day that we do. And that amazes me. I think of my growing up in the 50s, which were, I really believe, happy days. I mean, we didn't have the stuff then that we have. Now, hardly a week goes by, maybe two or three days, that there's not a shooting somewhere. I think there's another school shooting, this time in Georgia. A uh, police officer killed, that's right, and one, one injured. And then all the other, other stuff, epidemics, the addiction. It's kind of up to Annie with the heroin that's killing people the first time they try it. And uh, the numbers are staggering. Unimaginable, the numbers. Just locally, not counting throughout the state, southeast, the nation. And then we, we have, I learned today, a, a number, and I want to clarify it. I'm not sure that it's exactly what I heard. Um, but they were saying that a yearly, over 700,000 children disappear. And uh, a couple of years ago, Erica Stamey came to me, really burdened for the sex trafficking with children and youth. And, uh, I, you know, it just, I heard her, and maybe she's listening tonight, and I owe her an apology. I 
probably should have rolled my sleeves up and got a little more interested then, you know, it just wasn't something close enough, I guess, to register on my Richter scale as being a problem. But when you hear numbers like I've heard today, it is, it is, it's uh, more than I can comprehend. And then to, you know, it's amazing what you and I are permitted to hear. Amen. That is not filtered. But... Uh, I got curious about some things. The fake news began to intrigue me. And then the Pizzagate. Kept hearing them talking about Pizzagate. And I didn't have a clue about that. And I can't tell you what I found. But I'll tell you this, it kept me up. It kept me up. If a tenth of it, if a tenth of it's true, all of it had to be true, just a tenth of it. And what we are in in the world, uh, it, 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 it's a day that, uh, to, you know, if we didn't have him, where would we go? And then the responsibilities as parents. I want to take your Bibles quickly tonight, the book of Job. I've been in this and away from it and back to it and away from it and kind of like a windshield wiper back and forth today as to where we are. And, and two, I want to mention the conference in January with Brother David Wood, this revitalization conference. I don't, know if it, I don't know of anything that is as timely as this event will be in the life of our church. Uh, we, 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 if we are to reach the unreached generation, we got to have some help. Would you agree to that? And uh, we, we need to get our younger uh, church members here for that conference. Uh, in the past, we packed up going to Jacksonville, Florida. Way back in the day, went to Hammond, Indiana, uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Lynchburg, Virginia, pastors' conferences. We got one here. So we don't have to pack up. And several churches already have committed to participate. And because they know and see the need for their leadership, uh, both old and new. And uh, so pray that God will bless this conference. It's three hours on Friday night. And that date is, is the, uh, well, it's here on the bulletin, if I can read. Uh, the 6th, I believe, isn't it? 6th and 7th. I'm looking, here we go. Yeah, January 6th, 6 to 9. And then on Saturday morning from 9.30 to 12.30. And uh, then Sunday, Brother David will be here uh, on Sunday morning. And realizing there'll be some who can't be here for the conference because of work and other scheduling conflicts. But uh, we'll unify the Sunday school at 10. And, uh, and, and trust God to bless in a great and mighty way this conference to help us. Now, having said that, you got the book of Job? If you do, on the screen, you're going to see a couple of verses. And we'll start with verse 6. And uh, here, here's where I want to try to drill down. We know that we are not powerless. Agree or disagree? We know, the scriptures teach us, that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now, if, if these two things are true, why do we, if not, why are we defeated or why do we act defeated? Not a good question. Amen. I mean, whenever we, we, we know, we know that Christianity around the world is under attack. Uh, if you know anything, if you get any news, uh, any publications from any of the martyrdom uh, agencies, you know. That as we meet tonight in this, in, in, just in the, you know, the security of our church, there are those that tonight are worshiping in underground churches. Now, with the time zone, either before or after us, but there are those worshiping in places, Middle East, China, places where if they are caught, the membership may not die, but they're killing a lot of preachers. 
And if, they don't, if they're not killing them, they're imprisoning them. And if they don't imprison them, they, they hurt them. And if you remember, Randy Hogue was here a few years ago. Randy told about being invited to China. And uh, he accepted the invitation. And they got him in. And he's preaching in an underground church. And it was in the pastor's home. And he said they packed in about 100 and 150 in the home. And he preached four times that day. So he preached over 500 people in a house. He said what really got him, he heard the testimony of the pastor. He had been arrested. He'd been tortured. He'd been beaten. But he wouldn't quit. Then they came to his church one Sunday. And they didn't arrest him. They arrested his daughter, a teenager. And executed her in front of him. By asking him, by stating, if you don't quit, we're going to kill your daughter. Will you quit? He said, I can't. And they shot his daughter in the presence of the preacher and his wife. And you know in China, you couldn't have but one child. By law, you couldn't have but one. So there are people paying a price that you and I find absolutely unimaginable, un unbelievable. ISIS, they've burned Christians in cages. They've beheaded them. They've mutilated them. Uh, they've, they've killed children there in front of the parents. And so when we talk about our faith, listen, it's not for sissies. Sometimes we, you know, we kind of maybe portray it that way, and, and, but it's not for sissies. Uh, it, it, it's, it's the call of God. Now, where he leads, he feeds. Where he guides, he provides. And thank God, our home is not this earth. Amen. He's preparing a place for us. And we want to give him glory for that thought. But as we think about the day and, you know, stuff, I thought about Job today, and I, I saw some things I shared with a couple of guys earlier that I, I cannot share publicly because it's just too, too far. It's too morbid, it's too everything. And so I was thinking, now what, what do we do? You know, how, how do we prepare our hearts for whatever may come our way? And, and Job chapter 1 verse 6 came to mind. Here he says, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. Now, I don't think we have to be. Oh, a rocket scientist to figure out the reason for all the evil in our day. And, and that's because of Satan. If you agree on that, say amen. Now, Satan's first mentioned in Genesis 3. We see him again in Genesis 6, I believe. And then the book of Job introduces him here. And then if you look in verse 7... The Bible says, and the Lord said unto Satan, whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. So that's insightful for me. Is it for you? And as far as I know, this dispensation we're examining in this text is still true in our day. And, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know that that meeting may occur tonight or did occur today, that Satan might make his appearance and God may speak to him and say, where you been? We've been walking around to and fro on the earth. Well, did you happen to walk through Myrtle Beach today? Did you, you know, what did you observe? We have to be practical with Scripture. If you agree with that, nod your head. I mean, we can't rule it out. We can't say he didn't. We can't say he did. But we know in Job, the first chapter, he did on this occasion. And then if you look in verse 8, he says this, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant who? Job. Well, we could put our names in there. Have you considered my servant? Job. 
that there's none like him in the earth. Notice this next phrase. A perfect man and upright and one that feareth God. And he is screweth. He, hate e he hates evil. Sounds a lot like Noah, doesn't it? Noah was a, this perfect, he would be complete, meaning he was a believer. And then if you look with in verse 9, we have a little more of the transcript. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? And here we can kind of see, I think, the attitude of the world. There are those, especially this first time I heard this thought process, came out of Europe. And it was back when, oh, what was his name? Former prime minister who, who made the pact with Bush. I heard it. Tony Blair. Tony Blair. I learned Tony Blair was a professing Christian, but he didn't tell anybody. Because he said if he publicized that he was a believer, that it would have hurt him politically. Because in England, you got to understand this is the birthplace and the home of Charles Spurgeon. And many of the great founders of the faith, I mean, they sent the missionaries that came here. But in Britain, if you're a professing Christian, the general populace and the elites look upon you as being weak. And they look upon Christianity as being a crutch. It's like a, they're, they're, they're saying it's like a rabbit's foot that you have to have this faith in Christ. And Blair didn't, I mean, he's been out of office, what, eight years? I don't know if he served while Obama was in, in or not, but shortly thereafter he, 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 he was out. How could it be that our faith could be looked upon by some as being a superstition? Wonder how Washington feels about us. See, if you got a faith that doesn't mean anything, everybody likes it. If you got a faith that stands for something, Satan really doesn't like it. And so we're, we're in an age where in America it's kind of popular to be identified with some affiliation of faith. But for the most part, it doesn't matter as long as you got a faith. I mean, it could be like Jimmy Carter's sister years ago. She believed the tree could be God. And all kind of animate things. So does that kind of faith hold up in the time of real trial? The answer, I do believe, is going to be no. But here's that idea. Well, the only reason Job serves you is because you bless him. Well, that's what he says right here. Doth Job fear God for naught? Now, what, what are you doing for Job that he, that he loves you? Well, look on, please, in verse 10. In verse 10, the Bible says, Has not, notice now, has not thou made a hedge about him. Now, we might say fence. We might say wall. We might say some type of enclosure that protects us. You see, has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. Boy, Satan knew a lot about Job, didn't he? The reason I believe that he knew so much about Job, he'd been walking around that hedge. He'd been looking at a way trying to, trying to get in. He had noticed how God had blessed Job. And, and, and so he had gotten the eye and the attention of Satan. And it was because Job was a man of God. He was a man of faith. Agree or disagree? Now, if we agree, that says something. And then if we agree, we have to kind of get in the valley of maybe decision or commitment, which today in the modern church is an awkward place 
for a lot of people to, to go. Because you see that if, if we aren't with God, then we're kind of out in no man's land. You see, either we live in the will of God or we live out of the will of God. Can we live with one foot in the will of God and the other foot outside of the will of God? If, if we do, we've got to cut us in half because, you know, we're not holy in either world. And that means probably we're most miserable. And that could explain some of the misery in the church. People want to serve God on one hand and then they want to go with their Worldly friends and others on the other hand, and they're kind of going back and forth between the two. They're not fully committed to either camp. And so they're kind of in the middle. That sounds like being lukewarm, doesn't it? Not hot, not cold, not totally given to God when they can really be blessed. But at the same time, they've not just turned their backs on, on their faith. Now, having said that, this is Satan's judgment. Hast not thou made a hedge about him? Now look in verse 11. Verse 11 says, But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Listen, Satan didn't get his name by accident. He's the accuser of the brethren. That's one of his names. That's what he does. I mean, he, 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 he wants to do what he can to bring us down in the sight of God, not, not leave us alone. And then if you look in verse 12, this is interesting. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And we know the rest of the story. What happened? Well, we know Job lost his family, and then he lost his possessions, and then he lost his health. What he didn't lose was a nagging wife. And if you study the book of Job, you can know that's the case. It got so bad, he's covered with boils, she just gets in his face and says, you wretched man, won't you just curse God and die? And Job stood firm in his faith to say, hey, I know my Redeemer liveth. And so he never wavered in his faith. And that's why we talk about the, the faith and the patience and the sufferings of Job. It protected his faith and, and, and projected it. And we know in the last chapter, we find there Job prays for his friends who were really his enemies. And I guess he included his wife in that prayer too. And God multiplied back everything he lost. Now, that's the picture of Job. And that's kind of off on the horizon for most of us. But look in Ephesians chapter 6, just for a few verses. And let's see what God has for us in this day that we live. And, and, and should, should this be a place where we might claim these promises and provisions God has for us. Because again, if greater is he than is in us, and he that is in the world, than he that is in the world, that's a good thing. And, and so in Ephesians chapter 6, I want to look at verse 10. Because I think that day is out there. In verse 10 he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of his what? His might. Brother uh, Jerry gave testimony of how God had blessed on Monday evening and how prayer was answered and rejoicing went forth. And those who are prayer warriors, you, you know that this is true. And, and you know how to be strong in the Lord. And we have to claim his provisions and power, but we do it by beginning in verse 11. Look at that with me. Verse 11, he gives us the insight. Put on the whole armor of God. Why? That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 
What does this word wiles mean? That's, that's an old word. But the best translation I've found is ideas. Where do we get ideas? They come in our mind. Now, what does that say? What can we learn in verse 11 when we're told to put on the whole armor of God? You say, how do we stand against the wiles of the devil? Well, we've got to locate where, where the wiles are and what they are. Well, their ideas. What do you have an idea? It comes in the mind. And so Satan has access to the mind. That's where the war takes place. That's where the war's taking place now. That's happening in 2016. You see, Satan puts an idea in our mind, and we let that idea grow and grow. Kind of like planting a seed. You put it in. It gets a little nourishment. And after a while, that seed begins to germinate. And it begins to take root. It begins to grow. And the longer we leave it in there growing, the stronger that idea becomes. And there comes a point where we do something. The idea is here. It's in the mind. Not the brain now, but the mind. The mental part of man. The spiritual arena. And as that idea begins to take root, we get in the valley of temptation. And when at first we weren't interested we could put, ah, no. But then after a while, we don't resist that thought, and it stays there, and it stays there, and it stays there, and it takes a little root, and takes a little root, and it gets a little more nourishment that Satan sees to it that it gets. And then before long, that idea becomes an action, and it dictates to us. I think this is what happens in the vast majority of marriages that fail? Do you think if a couple felt toward each other at the, end of, at the beginning of their marriage that they did at the end, they'd have got married? No. that make any sense? No, a process had to occur. Then after a while, these ideas, suspicions, and the Family Bureau of Investigation, that's the family FBI. And all these other things begin to grow, and then that that we did not notice at first. You know, I got a pretty sneaky suspicion that a man's feet stunk before he got married as much as they did after he got married. But in the courtship, there were some things accepted. You know, maybe there should be some kind of process saying, I do, clean your feet. Uh, these other habits that get on our nerves. The things we did not notice in the courtship. The things we did not notice before we said the I do. But then they begin to take root. And, you know, probably with most things, as a coach that comes along, there's always somebody Satan will send our way. If somebody has hurt our feelings, to fan the flame. And say, well, I don't blame you for feeling like that. You ought to feel like that. And so the little bitterness germ grows, and the anger begins to grow, and, and all that's being fed. And it's exactly what Satan wants. Put on the whole armor of God, the Bible says. Why? that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the ideas of the devil. Look on in verse 12. This verse is interesting as well. Verse 12, he says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now, flesh and blood is mankind. That's us. But he goes on and identifies where the real battle is. He says, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in what? High places. The bottom line, to put it in maybe some O'Ree County terminology, when you go up against the devil, if you go in the flesh, you ain't got a chance. You ain't got a chance because we're going to lose every time. 
we will lose that battle. But when we go in the power of God, when we go resisting his ideas, resisting his wiles, putting in our heart the word of God and not listening to those ideas we get, then we begin to, to grow. That's verse 12. Look at 13. 13 goes on a little bit more and says, Wherefore take upon you the what? The whole armor of God. Why? That you, may, that you may be able to withstand, not stand, withstand in the what day? The evil day. Now, let's look at two things. Now, most doors are kind of like the door in your home. You, you usually push the door in to enter your home. And so you put resistance. That's withstand. You put your foot on the door. Or maybe if, you, if you're a little bit concerned about your lock being good, you may have taken and put a chair up against the door where it can't be pushed open. And they sell devices that you can put so that a person can't push your door in. The night latch is always on the inside, not the outside. So that you would have protection. So if you look at this, he says, notice now, you've got, you got to follow this. He says that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And notice what he says next. And having done what? Some things? All to what? To stand. And so we got, we got the recipe. God's given it to us. Now, let me ask this question. Do you think... That it's possible that we might be exempt from this? Or do you think that it might be that we need to be able to put on the whole, whole arm of God Amen. so we can withstand? You see, if we don't know we're in a war, we've already lost it. We've already lost it. Now you got to remember this. What did Job do? Job attracted two persons' attention. He, attra he attracted the eye of God. God said, if you consider my servant Job, he's perfect and he's complete in his faith towards me. And Satan said, yeah, I've, I, I, I've seen him. Yeah, I know. I know Job. Hey, does, he, does, does, he, does he love you for naught? Does he serve you for naught? And God says, okay, have at it, have at it. And we know that Job was tested. We're all tested. If you're believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and your faith has never been tested, you scare me. You scare me. I think that's some of the fault of some of the TV evangelists who give this positive picture all the time of something good. That believers never had a bad day, or you can wish that bad day away, or you can do whatever else to get rid of the bad day. No, no. If you're a child of God, there's going to come a time of testing. Otherwise, how do you know if your faith's any good? You won't unless it's tested. Do you test drive a car? You check the air pressure in your tire? I mean, certainly you don't have a flat and say, I wonder if I got air in my tire. Well, what if you have a flat along the road of life and you got to put on the spare and that spare is called faith and you say, I hope my faith's good. See, faith's never tested. You know, is it any good or not? And so we can know these things will come. And then I want you to notice, please, a phrase I didn't highlight sooner. He says this, that you may be able to withstand in the, what kind of day? Evil day. day. I believe we're living in an evil day. Amen. I, I think it may well be the most evil of days. I don't know. I don't know what it was like in Sodom and what it was like in the old world before the flood. But I do know this. In Genesis 6 is the description of how evil men's thoughts were evil continually. And I know, I know in Matthew 24 the Bible says that the Lord's going to come back in a day like the days of Noah. And that day God judged the world with a flood. 
And so I know that's an end time sign. And the only conclusion I can make is it was an evil day. And in the end times, there's going to be a day that will be an evil day. And we very well may be living in it. Now, if you go through the rest of the chapter, you'll see the other points. You got the word of God, the sword, and the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation. What I want you to notice is this. Of the armor described in Ephesians 6, there's none for the backside. Except maybe the helmet. But there's no breastplate on the back. It's all on the front. I read years ago. Not sure who Tozier, I think, maybe. Reading his book. He had a lot. Uh, he had written a lot on spiritual warfare and some others. But he said the reason God didn't give us any armor for the backside was that he never planned for us to retreat. Right. You see, if we retreat, we turn our back to the devil. We have no protection there. God intends for us to go forward because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That's right. We cannot win backing up, but we have the battle won when we go forward. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, it may be a baby step, but any step forward is resisting that that's coming against us. That's right. And I do like, huh? He got to go. Old brother Randy Hardeman used to talk about sinking spell. And sometimes we find ourselves, that's just being down. And he described how he'd had a breakdown. And then God renewed him. But he made this statement. Whatever we face, if we have a pound of resistance, against us. God will give us a pound and a half of power to go forward. Now, I'd like for him to give me 10 pounds if Satan's putting one against me. But if we have whatever, whatever in life comes against us, God's got more that he'll give us to go against it. Amen. But where we really mess up, it's whenever we give up and turn and run because that's exactly where Satan wants us. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us tonight. We know these days that we live are different. It's so different. Lord, hardly, hardly, Lord, there's so many, so many outlets that literally go out of their way to mock you. Those that are putting up billboards mocking Christmas, going to church. God, I pray that you would, that you'd so convict the hearts of those that are coming against you that they'd be saved and put up a new billboard, maybe one that would read, Jesus lives in my heart. And Father, we know that in these days, as we prepare for the celebration of your birth, we know that we'll see family and we'll see friends and we'll see some that are on top and some that are on the bottom and some that are defeated. God, use us. Help us to be an encourager, an encouragement. But Lord, to do that, we've got to be encouraged. And we've got to be on top. So help us, Lord. As so we have our heads bowed tonight and our eyes are closed, let me ask you, if you know you saved, heaven's your home, can you give a testimony? you saying, Pastor, I'm saved. God bless you. God bless you. Maybe tonight you'd say, Preacher, I got a burden for somebody. I got a loved one. I got a family member. I got a friend. I got a heavy heart for them tonight. And I want to pray for them. Would you lift your hand wherever you might be? God bless you. God bless you. Maybe tonight you'd say, Preacher, it's me. I need God's touch. I just need God's touch tonight. I know everything that we've looked at in Scripture is true. And I know that we must put on the whole arm of God. And I want to claim it tonight. Well, that's our privilege. Lord, bless this time of soul searching and decision making. Have your will, your way tonight. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen.
I have been asked, Brother Jack shared with me that he has learned that uh, Annie Amade has gone to the hospital and we'll be praying for her and little Rachel, as Brother Jerry shared, is there with pneumonia and strep throat. And, and uh, we have those that are either in the hospital, in rehab, some are in hospice. You'll see uh, Karen's sister, Mary Albright, and then Kenneth Benji, Bonnie Dutton, Eloise Goodson, and then those that we have that are in the nursing facilities. And then if you'll notice, there's Noe Mendoza and family. Noe contacted me, I think, yesterday. Might have been today. Time runs together sometimes. But last Sunday, Noe's nephew, Josue, whose dad pastors in Lakeland, Florida. In fact, I spoke in a conference there for them a few years ago. But they'd gone out to eat. And somehow, Josue's wife, 29 years old, got food poisoning. Ended up in the hospital. And then the rarity of things that could happen did. And she got a virus that went to her heart and caused her death. And they have two or three small children. So remember, no way ask that we remember uh, the family. He was on his way then to uh, Lakeland from uh, a Mission, Texas. So they're probably still on the road. I think that might have been this morning that he called me. So any others to add to our list tonight that, that we don't have? Any unspoken? God bless you. God bless you. Let's stand together. Jerry, let's sing an invitation. And those who'd like to pray may. Others may pray in place as we search our hearts and search our hearts for victory in him. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch Him, and say that we Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see. That's what it's all about, amen? amen? Looking for Him. You know, we've started the candle lighting Sunday, and really, it's just a moment of adoration. We want to adore Him. We want to give Him glory. Praise Him for the wonderful, wonderful Savior that He is. And maybe that will continue. Again, this Sunday and all the way through to Christmas Day, trusting God to illuminate His Word and give us victory. And we'll give Him praise. Amen? Well, let's close the service in prayer tonight. Brother Freeze, would you dismiss us, please? Thank you for what we have heard tonight and how our hearts are moved and touched to just get closer to you and to love you more and to give you greater adoration if that's even possible, Father, that we can do better. We thank you for the evening. We ask you to watch over us as we travel to our homes. Give us safety as we travel. Bless each home, each person. And we'll give you the praise and the thanksgiving in the precious name of Jesus, our